Good morning everyone, it's Rachel here and we are finally starting our Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Today we will be doing the sampler, but I had to address a few things before we get started. So quite a lot of people ask me um, what size spine. I would say a minimum of one and a half inches. Minimum. Um, because remember we're dealing with fabric and you might want to add um, some bulk to it so you don't want to go smaller than that that's about I think it's four centimeters um, for those who don't use inches uh, I wouldn't panic about the spine like if you have a book where you love the spine then yes but if you don't love the spine then what you can do some you can do you can change the size of the spine i've done many videos in the past i'm just trying to find my christmas journal where i put it um because that would be oh here it is um that would be a great spine as well for this type of project um i'm, I'm trying to think oh kathleen sunby she's going to do this type of spine so this would be a great spine to do um if you didn't have a spine big enough so all you need is your book covers without the spine um, or you could also um, have a soft spine and do a, a slow stitch like what I did on my Christmas journal last year. Okay, so there's many different options for the spine, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. If you love the color, don't care for the spine, but it's only tiny, do it. You can cut it out and, and then use the, the covers and then create your own spine. Okay. So we can address that further on. Am I in focus? I don't know. Yes. Okay. All right. So that's the spine issue. See, my spine is too big, but it does curve because it's um, it's kind of cracking. Uh, it's way too big, but I'm not worried about it because, or I'll cut it out, or although I do like it, or I'll just have a book that's got a too big a spine. It's not. A pro I'm not. I just don't worry about those things. Now, my other question was. How do you gut a book? Because so I apologize because I did just assume that we, like a lot of you, are journal makers. So uh, I didn't address that and I apologize for those who are not journal makers. So you need a book. This is very important. You need to see that gap there. You need a book that's not glued to the spine. Okay. If it's glued to the spine, well, then you could, then you will cut away your cover and not have the spine. And you'll, you'll do an open spine or a slow stitch spine or whatever you like. So this book is quite loose. It's an old one. I think it's from the first half of the 1800s. Uh, let me see. It was 1840. No, 18. No, oh, 1845. There you go. I went pretty close. Um, anyway, I'm going to cut this out of the spine. So you take your, you need a cutter. And you sort of just have to pull it apart and very carefully just slide down with your cutter. I'm shaking you guys, I'm sorry. Um, and just be careful not to cut your spine if you're wanting to keep that particular one intact. If you were to get a little slit, um, don't worry about it. I'll tell you what I do. Then you can put it down and then just cut. And it comes out, they come out fairly easily normally. Okay, there's one, and then you do it on the other side, and that's much easier. So I just cut down there, and there you have it. It's done. Look at that. Okay. Right, and there's my cover. Now, this is only a one-inch spine. Probably wouldn't be big enough, so you'd have to, if you wanted this cover, you'd have to increase it. You could you could increase it with a, I, of, you, or you can use um, bookmaking. Um, there's this card, heavy card. For bookmaking, I just use the back of notepads that are very thick, and you just um, cut maybe cut it one and a half inch. You could glue this and then something else on the other side onto that on the exterior so that you would keep that there and then have maybe some fabric or something. So that's an option as well. So that's the how to gut a book. Okay, now there's been a lot of questions about preparing pages. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, guys. We're not preparing pages. I know Sarah prepared her pages. I did not. So what I did was I measured my book. I'll do it in centimeters because I do better with centimeters. Um, so mine's 17 and a half. I think I wrote it down somewhere and 27. And so 
This is the size that we're interested in. I took a centimetre off each measurement. So if it's 17 and a half, I did 16 and a half by 25 and a half, something like that. And so then I ripped my pages down. Actually, I think I've done them a bit smaller, but it doesn't matter. I've, I'll tell you what I've done. Oh no, that's about right. Um, yes, 16, a bit less than 16 and a half because I'm not precise and 26 I've done. Okay, so I'll tell you how I did this. I had my, I did, um, I'll tell you what I've used. I've used just rig. These pieces here are from vintage embroideries. I've cut up, cut up the embroideries and I always keep the plain fabric. Sometimes they're linen, sometimes they're cotton. One test I did do, because some of them are very tight weave, I just put my pin in to feel if I had any resistance at all. And I don't in this one. Another one that I had was a tighter weave and it sort of resisted and then went through. And then I didn't, I choked, didn't use that one. It might be this one here. It's just a tighter weave and it's a little bit harder to stitch. So all I did was I measured one. So I measured one. I don't know which is the one I measured now. Um, I did measure one and then um, I've got two pieces here to show you what I did. I measured one. So this might be it here. No, that's not it. Let me just grab one that looks right. This one, I think, that I've cut. Let's test. So I measured this one, 25 and a half. That's correct. And that's 17. Okay. And then what I did was, really easy, guys. I got my pieces here. Um, this one's, this was actually the lining of a some sort of dress or something. But it's just like a, a calico or muslin. I put it on top. Just line it up. Line it up where it fits best. Put a snip here and a snip there and rip a roo. Look at this. You just rip it and it's very satisfying. And rip it down there. Even more satisfaction. And there you've got your piece. How easy is that? Now, what I do recommend is just say this is my original piece that I measured. I know the measurements are right. I always use my original piece. For the ripping because um, as you go maybe one slightly bigger one slightly smaller they tend, do tend to often grow so um, you don't want them to grow so use your original one and I'm gonna need, I need another one I've prepared more than what I need we'll count them in a second so here I'm gonna snip there and there okay and you rip and then and I keep those other bits because, you know, you might paint them, you might do anything with them. They're good basic fabrics to keep. Um, and so these are my pieces. Now, what will happen is when we're ready to make our book, or you'll do it accordion style, or you'll do it um, the pages like Sarah. And these are, these are where we're going to be doing it. This one's a bit narrower, so I'll have to remember that. I might not use that one. But I can always extend it with some of my fabrics when I'm collaging my fabrics. So we'll count them in a sec. I just bring them down. Get rid of all your extra threads there that are annoying. And gosh, and we haven't even gotten into the sampler yet. Okay, so these are my pieces. I've, I've prepared more than what I need. I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I thought I did eight. One, two, three four five oh no six seven seven okay because they're going to be six there's going to be um six blocks so these are our bases for our blocks but i just prepared an extra one in case i needed it okay let me see what other issues there were um and then when we're ready to make our pages don't go ahead and do it just wait guys if you're doing the folded pages what your pages are going to be are so just say I'm taking off um, half a centimetre here. So it would be total one centimetre. Basically, you take your width here. Let's do it that way. Just say mine 17 and a half. You double it and then you take half a centimetre off. And the height is the same as what these are. Okay, and that will be your double page. When you've stitched your project, you will stitch it to the page. Okay, but let's not worry about that. Let's just get cracking and get started and then we can worry about that later because you might decide you want to do the accordion one where they fold back onto each other and then you just whip stitch top and bottom 
and the pages are attached and then we'll stitch them we'll attach them to the spine okay so don't worry about it. it's not as hard as it sounds now what else did i have on my list um that i needed to so prepare six to seven bases um and then you need to prepare two pieces for your sampler okay and that's what we're about today and i i haven't seen sarah's video yet so i don't know um what she's addressed i don't i apologize if i'm addressing the same thing and i'll need to bring my ring light over closer so you get a better light there we go okay so this is a lovely um hemp that i have and i've done i've prepared it the size of my page and then what i did was um, and this would depend on the size of it. If you have a smaller book, you might need to take less off your edges. But because my book is quite, it's, you know, it's biggish, um, I've gone in a quarter of an inch on, or not, uh, half an inch, sorry, half an inch on each edge, half an inch there, there, and there. And it's kind of a vague half inch. And then what I did was I actually just um, put some tape on there so it didn't move. Just some washi that I don't particularly like. Um, it's not my sort of style. Put that down there. And then I got my ruler. I put my, I took, measured my half inch from here to here. I used my, my um, mat. If you don't have a mat, you might use a, mine's in centimetres, but you might use a quilter's ruler if you have one. Um, that's really great to get your square edge if you know what I mean. Um, otherwise, use your mat. If you've got a mat, use your mat. If you're doing centimetres, excuse me, I turned away. If you're doing centimetres, it's about, well, maybe go in one centimetre from the edge. Okay, that's what I did. And then um, these dots down here just represent half, half an inch, or it could be one centimetre. So it's half an inch. I didn't even, like, I'm not even counting with the stitches or anything like that, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, but gets half an inch down and I just put a few dots along there with this pilot friction pen because when you iron it it does disappear now when Sarah and I used to do projects for homespun they used to tell us no we're not going to recommend that because it can reappear it hasn't ever reappeared on anything that I've used but for this sort of thing I'm not worried about it and also for embroidery because quite often with embroidery I cover up my lines anyway but if it was something where you're going to see the markings then you might not want to use this you might want to use a blue uh, water soluble um, fabric pen okay um, so just put a few rows of um, these it's it just sort of it's just a guide to help you go straight okay and this is not I didn't do this with the other base fabric because I'm not covering this up okay I'm just going to stitch this directly onto my page and you need two of those okay so I'm going to pause the video now and organize myself I might zoom in a bit for the stitching okay <laughs> 